And welcome to another edition of Visit Las Cruces Live, the real New Mexico podcast. My name's Ed Carnathan, and we have our first time ever third round. Guest that's been on for a third... You, you hold the record now, Barbara. The, you, you hold the record for the most appearances on the podcast. Well, I take that as one of the highest compliments. It is. Compliments it is. It's a high compliment. Mother Hubbard, Barbara Hubbard with us, and uh, I'll tell you... Uh, it's great to have you back on again because we have to talk about several things today. But the first thing is the amphitheater, the proposed amphitheater that you've been working on for well, quite a while. This was designed, if you're yes. taking a photo of it, Dad, yes. 10 years ago. And right. it's hard to believe that we've come that long without doing it right. quicker and out doing our sister city, El Paso, but mm -hmm. this amphitheater is nothing like anybody else's in the nation because yep. it's a two-factor thing. Ed. Yes. We not only are going to teach the concert and production part at this facility, mm -hmm. but believe it or not, we're going to do the same thing to the rodeo team and yep. the rodeo. They can get on the collar. Yeah. We can do both of them inside this facility. So we'll be able to have concerts there, mega concerts, that we haven't been able to get in quite a well, while. Well, the reason is, and you'll notice that I've got a 15,000 seat mm -hmm. ability yes. to 22,000. Yes. The contract's coming out of Nashville right now. Mm -hmm. Is they're looking for all the venues that can hit 15,000. So... Basically, we need to get started. We need to get started on this, definitely. Now, you also said uh, rodeo. So there will also be a, a rodeo arena with the amphitheater. It will be inside the amphitheater. Yeah. In other words, we'll keep each other's schedules. The mm -hmm. director of the building will notify them what dates are open, and they can plan around that. The cost is not – I reduced it. I took away the 4000 arena that we had for the symphony. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get to that later on down sure. the road. But since George Strait has just completed 110,000, George has been with us as yep. the honorary chairperson yep. for 10 years. You got some royalty helping you out, King George. Well, I know, and can you believe he sold 110,000? <laughs> <I>, yes. <laughs> I did Bob Hope in there. We right. just did a half a stadium. But right. George is George. I started many, with him. Speaking of George, let's talk about George real quick. How many times did you bring George to town? Seventeen. Jeez, I think I, I think I went to at least five of them. At well, least. that's great because if I could t tell him to throw away that he's done his last one and yeah. come back, we certainly would honor him. Because oh, sure. Ben Farrell started me with him way back when he made his first hit. In yeah. fact, I booked him over in Corbett. Yeah. Believe it or not, I was over in Corbett for a while with right. the students, and uh, time has um, really flown. If yes. you want to look at it that way, Ed. But with this with this amphitheater, we're going to be able to bring a lot of tourists to town. If we have these big concerts, people will come to town. They'll bring their money. They'll stay overnight. They'll go to the restaurants. It will definitely help the economy if we're able to get this amphitheater going. The main thing is tourism. I know that's what everybody's pushing. Mm -hmm. I can remember when the headlines were $7 million raised right. through a concert at New Mexico State. Yep, for sure. And the series with Garth, yep. three shows, you know, the big boys told me, you don't have the market. <laughs> I tell them back. <laughs> Not only do I have the market, but we sold 60,000 yep. seats yep. to Garth. Now, if that's not a market, I give right. up. I, I remember how quick that went, too. When the shows went on sale and you clicked the button to get a ticket, and boom, they were gone. Well, it was that fast. I'm ready to finish what we're fixing to start, yep. and I was going to let Jesse tell yes. a little bit about it, but I'm going to lay the groundwork first. Sure. Je Jesse Gutierrez, our guest here, she's uh, one of your students. <laughs> Yes. Right. Aspire, aspiring attorney, right? That's what I understand. Yes, I am okay. a yeah, junior at the University of Texas. Okay. Hoping to go to law school. Awesome. But. Awesome. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, and taking everything into consideration, if we can go and get this done, and I want to pat Dr. Costa. Mm -hmm. She tackled a feather 
February, uh, FBI, what, whatever you call the government. Yeah. Uh, uh, you take that, for instance, right. and realize that we are teaching youngsters. Right. I want the landscape on this building to be done by the landscape kids. Yeah. I want anything that is marketing that we can use to be done that kids come in and learn how to work. Well, for instance, she had to put up with me all summer. Right. So if she has a someone that needs to be copied or anything, I call Jess and say mm -hmm. get with it. But it's not the money to me. Sure. It's honoring those students that I have taught. Well, that, that's Along what, with others yeah. that have backgrounds now, I'm still teaching. I'm right. teaching a class with Dr. Hertz when she let me come in and bring the speakers for the mm -hmm. program. And anybody out there can come to one of them. I don't know uh, if the Barbara Harbor room is occupied or not occupied on certain dates, but we're welcoming anybody that wants to come and hear the speakers yeah. or listen to a class. I talk too much at it, the bell rings. So. <laughs> well, that, that's your whole purpose, right? Everything since day one has been about the kids, been about the students. Um, you, you are a teacher by nature, right, Barbara? You are, you're a teacher in your heart, well, you're a teacher in your soul. And, and you're always giving back to the kids. And I think it's wonderful. The amphitheater should be manned by the students. And they should be uh, doing the jobs there. And they should be uh, learning, right? That's the learning situation. It's, it's, it's Hands-on, yeah. I'm a believer. This is an institution of learning at New Mexico State. And, of course, if you get this amphitheater built, it'll be a learning institution as well. Well, i tell you what. I hope everybody pitches in. The thing I want to do is give those kids credit that help me do yeah. those shows we put back enough money, and with the foundation making good investments, mm -hmm. the reason I came up with this raffle is I wasn't sure I was going to get yeah. to do anything. Right. Uh, but I'm going to fly and talk to Garth and see if yeah. I can twist his arm since George wants to rest a few days. Sure. But anyway, I want to reach the goal of a million dollars at New Mexico State's foundation. Mm -hmm. And we don't, it says, you know, we're on the way. We don't, we have 170000 to raise. I mm -hmm. saw that raised the other day here. Right. So uh, if you believe in education and you believe in these young people are worth saving, I would appreciate. And the, the thing with the raffle is we've put up five prizes instead of just one. Right. And I know $100 is a ticket price that you're not really used to every day there. Sure. And, but Marcy Dickerson was my first student, believe mm -hmm. it or not, that I took out job hunting. Yep. And Marcy and uh, Kathy Stout of the Salpec family mm -hmm. are trying to get out and help me sell enough to equal $1 million. So sure. we're 170 short. We're going to try our best to raise yeah. it, and I know the bulletin has gone in and done yeah. a story, and I've sat down with both stations, and they're going to give me a free one and a paid one. I can't ask for things without uh, covering the salary. Sure, sure. Maybe even yours, Ed. I right, have to well, face out. well, you know. I know. But uh, this drawing for uh, these prizes is going to be on your birthday. It's right around the corner your 42nd birthday, and we're, we're very excited that uh, you're going to be giving away some prizes. Oh, brag about the 97. I'm still here. you got to put up with me. But these prizes are insane. Jesse, talk about talk about these uh, prizes. If you yeah, will. so we have a plethora of amazing prizes. The first prize is a trip to Nashville with Mother Hubbard, well, you'll, oh, where you'll enjoy a night at the Grand Ole Opry. You'll get to go to the Ryman Auditorium. And Mother Hubbard is having a book written about her, so you also get to attend the book signing. Great. Yes, very exclusive, with lodging and airfare included. Right. And the second prize winner, just as good, with lodging and airfare included, with a trip to Hot Springs, Arkansas, with Mother Hubbard. You'll celebrate a um, St. Patrick's Day at the um, concert that she is putting on. 
The third prize winner, still an amazing prize. Yep. You get an Ashley Queen bed and two season tickets to the New Mexico women's basketball team season. Excellent. Fourth prize winner, um, Royal Jones, donated a suite for 25 people at Vado Speedway, which is amazing. You can arrange that with them. And the fifth prize is a wonderful guitar donated by our very own Hubbard's Music and two women's basketball season tickets as well. How, how'd you get the guitar? <laughs> you know, I'm the president yeah. of that organization, but they never <laughs> call me to do anything except bail them out when they're in trouble. <laughs> Right, your your son does an amazing job down there. By the way, well, Drew, yeah. Drew's his, a great guy. Well, he is the music one we kept out on the road, Pierce and I, right. for seven years. Right, and he and Marissa got married. When they come up, they lived with us for about a year and a half. Yeah, Drew has taken over the store mm -hmm. when I lost Pierce right. in two thousand and six. I tell everybody. You want a cup of coffee? Come to my house, cause I, I get lonely, you know, with just <laughs> me sitting there looking in a mirror. And uh, anyway, again, I've been blessed. Yes. Uh, the Salapex are happening through Kathy and Stout and her husband. Right. Uh, people have stopped me on the street. Wanda Bowman of Isley's bought every dad ticket in the outlet. Yeah. And. Uh, Gave us our first jump start. Right. If, along. if people want to buy tickets, where can they get them at? Well, they're at the bottom of the page yes. of the post. Well, I know, but I'm asking. <laughs> Jesse, you tell me. Yes. Oh, you I'm can. sorry. That's a good point. <laughs> you can purchase them at five stores here in Las Cruces. Game one, game two, right. Ashley Home Store, Hubbard's Music, or Coa's Bookstore, just right down the street. And everybody can give you a call? Yes. If, if, if yes. Uh, they need more information, yes. right? Yes, you can call me at 575-642-0610. All right, Barbara, again, this is so important, this amphitheater, and uh, your drawing and raising money for the Axe Showcase. But uh, if people want to find out more information or if they want to be involved with helping get this amphitheater going, what can they do? Just call me. Yep. I'll put your name down, your address down, and Dr. Uh, Acosta will probably send some one of the students with a poster out to explain yeah. everything. Because if we can, this goes back to Nashville. It goes yeah. back to L.A. Sure. Boy, in L.A. got me journeys, you know, for me to make it. I would have made it if Albuquerque hadn't had too many entertainment things in there. People are so good to me, yep. Ed, that we receive more things than I can even begin to say on the air. All right. Just the agencies last night, Frank Wayne trying to help Grapevine get a show, Lost Lonely Boys. I have to put all that tabbing down for them so they can reach what they want to do by selling tickets, and that's the premise of anything. Sure. And I'm thrilled to death that we've got 15,000 seats because that's what it's going to take when yeah. they start flipping who can yeah. do it and why are they doing it? Right. So the Lord hadn't called me yet, Ed, and I probably won't check out before. Well, let's let's hope so. Well, the All main right. thing is I want to get this done. I believe so in it yep. that the students need to get back to the hands-on teaching. Mm -hmm. And I would like to thank New Mexico State for allowing us to do yeah. that and become, to me, a big, big plus instead of any negatives. Yeah. So everybody that wants to help, chip in. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for coming on the show today. We really appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you all helping us sure. let the public know what Always. we've got. You, you, have, you have an open invitation to be on the show whenever you want. Well, i got three more weeks. All right. Wait, don't, for the 12th, I might <laughs> slip in on my oh, birthday. Uh, hey, whenever. <laughs> We'll, we'll get you in. Now, hey, uh, Jesse, yeah. well, I've already asked Barbara this. Um, when we have somebody on the show, and we always ask a final question, and I'm going to ask it to you, okay? okay? When you talk to people that have never been to Las Cruces before, or not from here, what do you tell them is your favorite thing oh, about the area? There are so many things. I would have to say the food is my favorite. Right. Being in Austin, I don't get good traditional New Mexican food anymore. Right. So my favorite on delays. On delays. Sure. <laughs> that's, that's definitely one of the most popular ones here in town. 
Rightfully, yeah. yes. All right, thank you both for being on the show. We really God bless appreciate you, Ed. it. Yes, thank for you. sure. I'm going to bring you down and stop Okay, that. thank you, thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Barbara Hubbard, our guest. And that's going to do it for another edition of Visit Las Cruces Live, the real New Mexico. We'll catch you next time. You can catch all these podcasts on most podcast apps. You can also go to visitlascruces.com. I'm Ed Carnathan. This is Visit Las Cruces Live, the real New Mexico podcast. We'll see you next time.